This video is brought to you by PandaWheel.com. PandaWheel sells thousands of electronics directly from China, including the THL 5000T. Please be sure to check them out using the links in the video description. Back in the summer of 2014, THL launched the THL 5000, a flagship phone with a high capacity battery. The THL 5000 was a great addition to THL's device portfolio, but didn't quite target the under $200 category. THL is back at it again with the THL 5000T, a revised edition of the 5000, which claims to offer the same great battery life for $80 less. This is my full review of the THL 5000T. The 5000T is available in a single variant, one with a sandstone black rear cover. Although it isn't being marketed as a clone, the THL 5000T looks very similar to the OnePlus One. The back cover is made of the same curved plastic material, while the front of the device has silver edges. The phone feels nice and solid in the hand, primarily due to its thickness and weight. It is 9.5mm thick and weighs in at 183 grams, but those are compromises that I'm okay with. I'd rather have good battery life in a larger phone than bad battery life in a slightly thinner phone. It's often difficult to find the balance between thickness and battery capacity, but since this phone is practically designed around battery life, everything else is secondary. The back cover does a nice job at resisting fingerprints and scratches while still feeling nice in the hand. The clips seem to be very tight, as the cover is both difficult to remove and snap back into place. On my unit, the top left clip does not snap in properly, which causes the cover to slightly stick out. This isn't a major issue, but it does make me wonder how long these clips will hold up for, and how well quality control is checking these devices. The silver plastic band running around the edges of the phone makes the device easy to grip and complements the back cover nicely. The side bezels on the front of the 5000T are also relatively large, but that's likely due to space being needed to accommodate for the larger battery. Taking a quick tour of the hardware specifics, you'll see a 13 megapixel OmniVision camera with a single flash at the top, just above the THL logo. On the bottom, we'll find THL's Technology Happy Life tagline and the speaker grill. Unfortunately, the speaker covers just a small portion of this area, similar to how it is on the THL 2015. The extra area that the speaker grill covers is useless in terms of improving audio quality, and it does allow more dust to travel below the rear cover. The headphone jack is on the top left of the device, while the micro USB port is on the top right. The device's only microphone is on the bottom left, and the power and volume keys are on the right side. Both of these buttons have great tactile feedback, but the power button seems to be a bit low, even for one-handed use. It also has the same issue as the THL 2015, where the power button takes a couple of seconds to respond. This is incredibly frustrating, especially when you need to quickly unlock your phone. On the front of the device, we'll find a Samsung E41 5 megapixel front-facing camera on the top right and red notification LED just to the left of that. That LED only flashes red, so you won't be able to assign specific notification types to different colors. Finally, there are also three capacitive buttons on the bottom, which unfortunately do not illuminate. In conclusion, the design is far from impressive. Although it does feel nice in the hand, the overall design is a copy of the OnePlus One, except with questionable build quality and a problematic power button. The size of the phone isn't so much of a big deal, however it is something to keep in mind. Despite being of a lower resolution, the 5-inch 720p display looks great and has excellent viewing angles. The color temperature is almost perfectly neutral, and the contrast is actually pretty good. The display can also get very bright, although the lowest brightness setting is still fairly bright. The 5000T supports GSM 850, 900, 1800, 1900 for 2G speeds, and WCDMA 850, 1800, 1900, 2100 for 3G speeds. This makes the phone fully compatible with AT&T's HSPA Plus network, and also mostly compatible with T-Mobile's HSPA Plus network. If you are on T-Mobile, you receive HSPA Plus speeds wherever T-Mobile has refarmed the 1900 band for 3G, which has happened in virtually every metropolitan region. If you're not here in the United States, you can always check with your carrier or use the links to 3G networks in the description. I did test call quality over the AT&T US and T-Mobile US networks, and I have no issues to report. Although I heard callers fine, some did report hearing excessive background noise on my end. Your time expires on April 29th, 2015. The THL 5000T's speaker sounds okay, but it seems quiet and distorted. I wasn't expecting much, but the audio quality is still a bit disappointing.
The 13 megapixel Omnivision OV13850 camera exceeded my expectations. Most of the images turned out pretty well, and I think the camera is very capable at this price point. It works pretty well for both indoor and outdoor shots, although you shouldn't expect much in low light, as is common with pretty much any smartphone camera nowadays. I did have a chance to record a sample 1080p video. THL is shipping the 5000T with Android 4.4.2 KitKat with little customization. The launcher is slightly modified to include THL's own icons, but you can download another launcher like the Google Now launcher and have a nearly completely stock Android experience. The only other change that I was able to find was the addition of a one key clean button in the multitasking view, which I do really enjoy having. Any Android enthusiast will love the THL 5000T software since it is almost completely stock. On the downside, it is very unlikely that the THL 5000T will receive an Android 5.0 Lollipop update. THL has yet to release any official OS update to the 5 devices that I've owned in the past, and they have not released any firmware updates for the 5000T specifically. Because of this, I have about 10% confidence that THL will ever release a Lollipop update for the 5000T. That's really sad because the 5000T could really benefit from Lollipop's battery life improvements since the capacity is so large. The only hope we have is that a third party developer will release a custom ROM for the 5000T, but based on user interest thus far, that's also unlikely to happen. The 5000T's performance was reasonably good for this price point. With the MediaTek MT6592M Cortex-A7 Octa-Core 1.4GHz processor, the phone feels fast enough for basic use, but does feel a bit sluggish in comparison to newer MT6752 devices. It scored a 27,840 in Antutu and 369 single-core, 2066 multi-core in Geekbench. It does only have 1GB of RAM, which is enough for basic multitasking, but becomes a problem when you try to open more than a half dozen apps. Since the processor launched more than a year and a half ago now, I'm slightly confused as to why THL would choose this chip. There are other options available like the MT6732 and Snapdragon 410, which would have been slightly better for overall performance. The Mali 450 MP GPU has a similar story. It's pretty good, but not great. The phone handled games just fine, but the load times were noticeably slow compared to other smartphones launching today. The 5000T does include 8GB of internal storage, which can be expanded up to 32GB via a microSD card. That's not a whole lot of storage for apps that can't be moved to a microSD card, so please keep that in mind before you buy. Although GPS worked and locked within about 30 seconds on the 5000T, it was not very accurate. When driving in a large city, it confused which road I was driving on and gave me wrong directions. This didn't happen on just a single occasion either, this was consistently a problem when using the phone for GPS navigation. When driving in the country, however, I didn't experience this issue. And that brings us to battery life. With a 5000mAh battery, the THL 5000T had no problem lasting through nearly two full days of with average use or full day with heavy use. In my testing, I was able to get it to last from 7am to 5.30pm the next day with 4 hours of screen on time. That's about 35 hours without charging the device, which is pretty impressive. I also did do a video playback test with airplane mode on, wireless connections off, brightness set to 75%, and volume muted. The THL 5000T ended up lasting 11 hours and 4 minutes. The 5000T does support USB on the go and the option to use the 5000T as a portable battery pack or power bank. If you carry another phone or tablet, you can use the 5000T to charge that device using the included USB OTG adapter. If you purchase the THL 5000T from Panduil, you will receive THL documentation, a Panduil quick start guide, a screen protector, a snap-on case, a flip view case, headphones, a USB OTG adapter, a micro USB cable, and a European AC adapter. The THL 5000T has excellent battery life, a great display, and a good camera. 
Unfortunately, the design is uninspired, the performance isn't the best compared to newer 64-bit MediaTek phones, and it will likely be stuck on KitKat forever. For these reasons, it's difficult for me to recommend the THL 5000T. Personally, I'd rather have one day battery life and a great phone experience than two day battery life and a mediocre phone experience. It's great that the 5000T can last for long periods of time on a single charge, but the people needing that kind of battery life are also going to want a unique design, fast performance, and the latest software, all of which the 5000T has trouble delivering. If you really want great battery life and are willing to make many compromises for it, then you should check out the 5000T using the links in the video description. But if you're like me and would rather carry an extra battery pack than compromise on experience, then you should probably look elsewhere. Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful or informative, and also feel free to leave a comment below if you have any questions or want to talk about the 5000T. That is going to be all for this video. Thank you for watching, and please be sure to subscribe.